one, and we are officially live. What's up? It's Mike Wall, and I'm back with the first Agent Revolution podcast episode of 2020. As you know, this is the place where we deconstruct the biggest challenges facing today's real estate agent so that they can build a sustainable, profitable, and most of all, fulfilling real estate business. Man, I'm super excited today to be back in the driver's seat talking to my man, Jerry Van Leeuwen. Today, we're talking about how to create order amidst all the chaos of the new year. Um, these episodes are always recorded, guys, and transcribed over at theagentfactory.com. So if you want to check them out over there. But without further ado, hey, Jerry, welcome to the Agent Revolution podcast, my friend. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We uh, Today's topic was... Um, was kind of organic, right, man? Because yeah. I, you and I were chatting back and forth on Facebook and I was like, you know, give me a couple different ideas of some things we could talk about. And you were like, dude, I don't know what I'm going to talk about right now. Like I, there's so much chaos or so much, you know, um, I need to get organized. And I'm like, well, dude, let's talk, let's talk about that. Because like I was sure that, you know, and we were feeling this uh, too, by the way. And, and I know yeah. a lot of other agents are feeling this as well. So I thought it would be a perfect topic today to talk about you know, just getting organized and, and, you know, you know this and most agents know this, that this is the time of year that, you know, you, you've got hopefully some of your new strategies are, are being implemented and, and, you know, you're trying to create some order amidst all the new things that you want to do in, in the new year. And um, it can seem a little overwhelming. So, you know, before we get into today's topic, though, why don't you do me a favor, man? Um, Tell us a little bit about Jerry Van Leeuwen. Tell how you got into real estate. What's your background, brother? Yeah, man, absolutely. Um, well, I've been in real estate for five years now, uh, pretty much five years to the month. I was uh, I was actually a paramedic for the region of Waterloo here for nine years prior to. Uh, really, I, honestly, I felt like I hit a ceiling in that career. Uh, I, I leveled up on my education to be an advanced care paramedic, and, and just working in that industry, um, you really you don't have much further you can go with that unless I wanted to move all the way up north and, and you know work on a, an air ambulance by myself in the middle of nowhere. So uh, really looking at that lack of growth, I, I, I just broadened my options. I made made the decision to, to invest in myself and did a lot of personal, uh, personal improvement. And um, just with that option, I was looking at different industries that I could actually go into and, and build and have the opportunity uh, to increase my earning potential and and influence, right? So I was looking at I was looking at real estate. I was looking at pharmaceutical sales because I had the medical background back then, and I was looking at financial planning. Yeah. And uh, I read the Red Book, and I chose real estate to to go from there. So yeah, Matt Keller for well, I started out an independent actually for a year and a half. Okay. Uh, I was actually coaching with uh, Michael Reese, Jake Kinder with the NAEA. Uh, and I went through a Keller office and I joined them three and a half years and uh, built my business to um, what did we do last year is two agents. We did 57 uh, closed transactions uh, for groups in Canada. We were ranked number 16 for units and uh, number 18 for GCI as of October 2019. That's awesome. And, man. Yeah. December, we made the jump. That is awesome, man. So um, lots to unpack there. So, so you you kind of got the bug reading the Red Book, and and you you set out to build a team. Like you you knew that that was the blueprint to to do what you wanted to do in the industry, right? You didn't really just get into you know kind of casually sell a home here and there. You were trying to build a business, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right from the beginning, man. It was always it was always about building a business. Um, and a lot of the misconceptions when you get when when you get into real estate too, you think it's going to be a lot easier than it actually is. Yeah. Uh, and then you really get into it, and that's where you start to to really realize that you are you you're you're building a business, and there's a lot of things that you got to do, and a lot of things that you take into account uh, to really improve it, and and to continuously improve in yourself, and and grow the business to where you want it to be. Right. And, and so for you guys, like when you got into the business, what was your what was your basic strategy? What was the platform you were going to build on? Because, you know, really, I mean, in my eyes, there's there's really there's three different platforms you can build a real estate business on. There's your sphere of influence. There's inbound lead generation and there's outbound lead generation. What did you guys start with? Um, well, I started with uh, lead generation on like online. So it was I was outbound a lot of outbound through um, just calling leads. Yeah. Um, but I did transition going into Keller. I transitioned to a lot of the spheres. So we've got a full out 36 touch, 40 touch program. 
Um, the last two years, that's really been improved just through leverage right at the end of the day, um, really hiring a, a good admin uh, and director of operations to manage that aspect. And so right now we are working on a farm area as well. That's one of the 2020 goals is really to implement uh, a farm area of mm -hmm. 3,000 homes. And if we take, uh, and really using the social media tactics through um, retargeting as well, if we could take 20% market share on that, that'll add about 30 transactions in 2020. And my goal is to expand it to all of the area, which would be about 12,000 12, homes. And that would bring in 80 transactions at that, uh, at that market uh, share rate. Okay. And so, man, that's a lot. So, yeah. so okay. So the 2020 goal is, is you're really focused on farming this year and growing yeah. out your farm and, and, and like you've, you've done the research. Why, why don't we do this? Because I think this will add some value because farming is a hot topic right now, oh, yeah, um, sure. you know, whether it's like geo farming, um, you know, with mailers or, or, or some sort of an online strategy, but tell me if you don't mind, share with us specifically what your, what your farming strategy is. So I'm going to kind of do the land, sea, and air approach. Um, what right now, and I'm still in that planning phase for it. So I've got, uh, I've really got the design to work out. And then I have, I've got a landing page for home value website as well. And then I'm working on delivery because I can't personally do it for 3000 homes every two weeks. The goal is to get a flyer or a door knocker put in, um, put on the door of every home in the neighborhood every two weeks. And then we rotate between a branded, and an unbranded door knocker. So the brand is gonna have more of a market update, uh, throwing in our value prop as well. That's another big uh, change that I'm doing is developing a new value prop of a guaranteed offer, a guaranteed sale. Okay. So that one's coming down the pipe, it's in finalization right now. And then that's going on it as well. So then once they get the flyer, if they go to the, the HesslerHomeValues.com, then it will be, okay, now we, we can retarget on that front and then do our uh, retargeting ads through Facebook and stuff and uh, other platforms as well. Got it. So um, if I'm hearing you correctly, you're starting out with mail and you're trying to lure them online, right? And then once you're online, you're able to capture additional information and then retarget to them, correct? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. And most of that's done by like social media. Well, you're so I know people are gonna ask this question. So there's probably some sort of a landing page, right? That takes them either to um, well, or you could send them just to a, like a third party site like Commissions Inc. or yeah. um, or Boomtown, right? And that would be your home evaluation, getting them to register their home evaluation information there. Once they've entered their information in, they're in your database. You have an email address. You can create custom audiences or specific audiences on Facebook based on the information that they've given you and then continue to send them um, um home updates from your website, but remarket like your face in front of those people, um, yeah. different branding stuff, and then just adding value as well, correct? On social media? Yeah, exactly. So it's, and if you look at the standard approach of farming, it was really just either A, you're doing a postcard or a mailing once a month, right? But statistically speaking, you're gonna to need to accelerate it, but then you add in the social media and the, re and the retargeting, because about 60 to 70% of those people are not actually gonna move past the address stage in your home valuation. So with the pixeling aspect to it, you already can retarget that and then you can offer them, hey, you know, 10 tips, 10 tips to, to staging your home to net the most amount of money when you choose to sell. Yeah. Retarget with other downloads, which will then grab an email or a phone and then and really just build your brand and build your trust among those people as well because they're going to continuously see you. Right. Um, the goal out of the two is really build a custom audience. So if I'm in the area and I'm, I'm checking out I'm either a showing home or a we've got a listing in it, we can jump on, do a quick Facebook Live and retarget that to that custom audience. So now we're really seeing, they're seeing us all the time. When they yeah. do get to that point, they're gonna call us. Right, top of mind awareness, right? Yeah. It's your billboard everywhere, essentially. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. And, and so like that, that's obviously, um, th that's a lot of information and, and, and I'm sure that you'd be happy to tease that out with people if they're interested in learning more. Yeah, um, awesome. So, you know, that that's that is um, is that really kind of your one thing moving into 2020? Is that the one thing that you guys are really focusing on, focusing on because you've got these other pillars in place? Yeah, you know, that's that's it's the one thing that we're adding in. Absolutely. It's yeah. the one new thing, right? Where we still have the pillar for sphere. We still got our, our 36, 36 touch rolling uh, and that just still continue. Right. And, and touching on the chaos aspect, that's where we had to really just get clear and go back to the basics at the end of the day, right? Like I switched yeah. over end of the end of December. Um, we moved into my basement. I got a team running out of my basement right now. And 
I love it. Everyone's yeah, exactly right. So it was chaos when you when we when you brought that up. So um, you know, stuff was being missed here and there. So it's really just you have to have that communication and and clear um, I guess vision on what we're trying to do. So I went back to the basics. We're real, we're still running the 36 touch. We got our internet lead generation running still. So it's a matter of getting in touch with them, making sure your speed to contacts there. And then now I'm, we're building this plan out and not going to add it until it's, it's clear cut. We know the budget, we know what we're spending and we know who's delivering it. And then we launch it and go from there. So our goal for the farm was to launch February 1st. Okay. Yeah. And I'm just curious, man. Um, and this is maybe for my own benefit, but how long do you expect that, um, this 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 campaign to take before you generate your first listing i'm gonna give it 90 days for sure i think 90 days and and that is probably half the time from this traditional farm area but we are going to be that's where the heavy retargeting and the pixeling comes into place right and then door knocking right we're going to get out there be in person and um and that's one thing i miss too is i'm, I'm working on a it's on the list is doing a community page for the area yeah. where then we do market updates um and and really just become that uh that influencer in the area that everyone thinks about when when they're thinking about selling their home the neighborhood mayor right is it the yeah. neighborhood yeah the yeah. digital president yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i love it man i love it um what what's cool is like i wanted to tease that out a little bit because i wanted i wanted people to really resonate with um when you and i when, when we were communicating initially is like what was going through your head and, and like I think people, if you know, if you tell people things are chaotic, it's one thing, but to actually help them visualize what you were actually going through, yep. in addition to you know, um, in addition to your move and getting things settled that way, yep. and um, who's our person crawling around in the background? I mean, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. I told her before we got on, she's like, hey, I'm like, hey, if you don't want to be on this, you better move. <laughs> yeah, no, no, listen, we've had dogs jump in. We've had all kinds of stuff, yeah. man. I, I love it. Um, but no, uh, I digress. So, but again, trying to get the audience to connect to the actual chaos. And, yeah. and just to give you an example, in our business, it's like, um, I was really trying to simplify this year. Uh, I, I read the one thing, um, probably it started in November and finished like mid-December. And I love that book. It's one of my favorite books because it really, it it really tries to get you to peel back the the layers of the onion and get you to focus on that one thing that is actually moving the needle in your business. And um, and I knew if if I if I did that, um, essentially what you want to do is you want to scale the number of conversations you're having. We all we all know as real estate agents that. Um, Sales come from conversations, and the best way to scale conversations is by the is by talking on to people on the telephone, right? And and so I thought, you know, what we would do this year is we would try to put some stuff in place to really try to drive that behavior of of making phone calls and, and making dials and and sprinkle in a little fun with it, man. And and so you know what we're doing, we've um, we we've now got dialing seats for all of our agents on the Mojo Dialer. Uh, we have. Um, We've we put together a proprietary list of data, uh, motivated seller data, uh, people who are uh, likely to move. So they might be, um, and, and this is kind of I have an investment business too. We kind of taken it from the school of thought of the way we approached our investment business, but now we've taken these motivated seller lists, had them skip traced, put into the Mojo Dialer, and now that when our agents sit down um, for a session on the Mojo Dialer, every time they call. They have a higher likelihood that these folks are interested in doing business because we've already we, we've already we've already done the research and know that the data um, is 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 a situation where the person is going through divorce, um, perhaps they're in probate, um, it's an estate sale, there's tax liens, it's pre foreclosure, right? And so you know it's one thing to give somebody a phone book and say, hey, here call everyone in it, and we know that the likelihood of somebody doing business out of the phone book is not very high. So I thought, well, if, if, if I'm gonna get these people um, who've committed to us and our vision on our team to commit to making phone calls and, and a lot of phone calls because we're requiring that they make 300 phone calls a day uh, minimum that I wanna provide them, my commitment back to them would be that I'm gonna provide them the best opportunity when they make those calls that they set an appointment and actually go get a listing. And that was my, that was kind of my focus this year. 
Yeah, that's that's huge, man. And that and it's, it's creating that efficiency to it as well, right? You have that qualified list. They're more likely to make that move. You're going to have better outcomes at the end of the day. Yeah. And we would continue to supplement, obviously, with the buyer leads. Um, yeah. We use Commissions, Inc. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just, we're, we're really, but, you know, to boil it all down, like I said before, and reading the one thing, it was really just about, it was about making your calls. And we don't typically require people to make a certain number of calls, but if they're going to have the mojo dialer, the requirement is that they make 1500 calls a week minimum. Yeah. And, and they, they don't have to, we call it the accelerated agent program. They don't have to volunteer for the accelerated agent program, but if they do, then they, they, they commit to making those 300 dials a day. And at the end of the month, if, if, if they don't, if the dials don't add up then they owe us the money back for the seat. So it, it would be $150. And, um, you know, this is our first month doing it. I, get, I gave them kind of a freebie last month because it was the, the first month we had implemented the new dialer and some folks were still learning it. But um, we are, I, I suspect that just in doing this, we should be able to potentially even double our output from last year. So I, I think we'll end up somewhere around 400 homes um, when, when it's all said and done. Yeah, that's awesome. And absolutely, the effort in is, is going to get you the results for sure. Yeah. So, but, you know, it, we, we kid around and we talk about, you know, chaos. And I know people are tuning in because they want to learn some practical strategies on, on getting through the chaos. And um, I think in hearing you talk, um, really, it all starts with planning, right? And, and, and if, you're, if, you're, if you're in the chaos mode right now, um, it's always easier to say, well, you know, maybe you should start planning earlier. But the reality of it is sometimes we do. Sometimes we start planning in October and, um, and, and you know, the holidays happen and, and we get to a point to where, you know, here it is January, um, what, 7th, 8th, 9th, whatever. Yeah. It's the 10th now. Yeah. And um, and the days, the, the months just start getting behind you. And there it's never too late to start. Um, but you you also want to make sure that you get started. Uh, because we we have a tendency to um, just continue to plan and plan and plan, and we never actually put in anything into into action. And so, like for you guys, when you developed this this strategy, this farming strategy, um, how did you take it from you know plan to actually putting it in action? Like how what what is what is what are the steps you go through typically to do something like that? Yeah, and I, I'm going through those right now, and and that's the thing, right? Like I had. The whole all of 2020 had been planned and then making the move and doing strategy calls with with other agents um that's where the farm area really came into play and to really looking five years down the road of potential what that could bring in right so um analyzing it out and really breaking it down right look at the goal and and to work backwards from it so um for for financial purposes i i chose to start small and then and, and grow it as we go right, right. so running at three thousand homes uh, I really just backtracked. I did my research on how many homes sold in that area. So we can work that out. I know that there was about 150 homes that had sold in the area in the last 12 months. Yeah. Um, and then if I could do 20% market share with the land, sea, and air approach of the marketing, um, then I know that I could have this return uh, for number of transactions at my average commission uh, rate as well, right? So really then it's it's breaking it down to each portion. We got design, we've got, uh, we've got to get, have them printed and then we got to have them delivered so it's taking the time and looking at each area connecting getting quotes because Jody had been getting quotes for all the printers while I was I was talking to other delivery guys that will actually put the door hanger on the actual door yeah. rather than just in the mail with uh, with every other flyer that's going to get thrown out so I'm looking at different impact levers that can increase the the mind share uh, throughout the the course for the next 12 months right um, yeah, we're, we're just about there. It's more, we just, the design portion is what we're working on. So that is the next, uh, the next step really. Got it. And, and there, so there's like, when you talk about that, there, I think a lot of people underestimate the, you know, the actual planning and time that goes into that. And not that, not that that's, um, tedious or hard. I mean, it, there, there's some of its enjoyment, you know what I mean? Because, you know, you've got this new strategy and you kind of, you've committed to it and you're all in on it. But like, how do you, because I, I took some notes here and it's like, I, I know it's, it's, it's easy to say, you know, well, you, you make a calendar and you adhere to the things on the calendar, but what does that really mean for you guys and your team when you talk about like um, living by your calendar? 
Um, you know, it, it's, it's being accountable at the end of the day, right? And, and having, being accountable to yourself because when you, when you do it, the calendar and you have, you have everything kind of in line and that's your expectation and you have the timelines or the goals to finish certain portions of it. Um, at the end of the day, you're really living to, to everyone else's expectation as well, like on the team for, for us, right? Because I'm setting this up for everyone on the team as well, because everyone will be more successful as we go and more business will come in. Um, it's, it's tough though, because stuff comes up, right? In our business, I'm still in that churn. I'm in that high churn hustler kind of uh, style of business right now. So, uh, you know, clients reach out for showings, you have other appointments come up. So it's really about dedicating the time, blocking it out, having a system in place to really decrease those trend, those, um, I guess, distractions at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, another note um, I had here is that you know, it's about having the proper leverage in place. And, and what I mean by that is that, you know, you're able to lean on, um, you know, those folks who you've brought into your world to to help assist you and um, and keep you dollar productive, so to speak. And, you know, it'd be no different than like having a contract manager, right? And doing those, those I want to say menial or, or non-dollar productive tasks. I mean, those definitely need to be done. But if the if, if you're one thing, um, so to speak, is, is is really rolling out the um, logistical measures for the for the farming. Then these people have to be able to take those other tasks off your plate, so yeah. that you can focus on that because you know that's what's going to move the needle in 2020, right? Exactly, man. We wouldn't even be. We, I would not be if it was just me. I would not even be at this stage for the plan. Like we put two listings active this <laughs> day, and that's all Jody. That's the yeah. system we put in place and allowed her to time block. Um, you know, but if you looked at us at the beginning of the week and that chaos, like we are a, we're completely different now just because we went back to the basics and I said, OK, you do this and I'll do this and let's just get back to get back to work and get it back to where we we should be. Yeah. So how are you guys set up, Jerry, right now? How is your team set up uh, right now? I got two producing agents. I'm myself and then Graham. And then I have uh, Jody as the director of operations. And I got an ISA coming in next week as well. He's starting. OK. So, and who handles your admin stuff right now? Jody. Okay. Yeah. She's the admin slash director of ops. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So you guys are lean and mean, man. And I love it, man. You guys are selling a lot of property. You probably, that's, I mean, if, if I could have done anything differently, I think that um, I would have stayed a little bit leaner. Um, yeah. I was, we were just early on, we were kind of growing for the sake of growth. Yeah. And um, it certainly was, um, it cost us some of our, our profits early on. Um, but you know, we've made those mistakes and made those, made those adjustments as well. Um, what, so you're, when you guys, when you guys start doing your business planning, do you start in like October, November? And like, when, when did you decide that, you know, we're, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to implement this farming thing? The farming thing was was December, mid December. We had business. We had the business plan already done out, and um, really, it was it was to 100 transactions for for two, uh, 2020. We've really we we planned that from October to December. The farming came in, and we were looking at our budget with the style of business that I was rolling with with KW. It's very heavy sphere, very heavy um, uh, for events and whatnot as well. So we, we looked at the budget that we had and we had money left over in the lead generation budget. And that's where we made the decision to roll forward with this and uh, to implement it. That's why it's, it's, I would love, like I, I actually cringe the fact that it's January 10th and I don't have this up and running already. Yeah. It's realistically I should for, for looking at the goals for 2020. Right. Yeah. So that point's February 1st, just give us time to, to get everything done. What piece of technology makes life easiest on you right now? Just Google Calendar and and note <laughs> task Google Google tasks so we can write it all out to what needs to be done, right? And that's that's where like moving into the basement, we literally have what's important, what's not important, and or what can wait. And if it is really important, it goes right on there, so we're not interrupting each other. And then it just goes on there, and we can get it done, and everyone sees it and go from there. Yeah. Okay. So we talked about planning, starting to plan earlier, um, and and sometimes we we we. We 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 think it it doesn't always work, but we hope it does, right? Um, we talked about using a calendar, and, and like I said, you know, if it's not on my calendar, it doesn't exist. And I, it sounds like you guys are are, are um, kind of running things the same way there. Um, and then when you create those things on your calendar, 
Um, sometimes we just have a tendency to create a calendar that looks really good. In other words, it's got like lead gen on it. It's got all the things we're supposed to be doing, but we just don't follow it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, like I've had those conversations um, with myself and with, with my agents too. Um, so you have to be disciplined enough, not only to create that ideal day, but to also follow the things on, on the, on the calendar. Um, and then knowing your one thing, which I think is extremely important right now, um, and then being able to leverage out those other tasks, right? Those those tasks that still need to be taken care of, but that still allow you to do your one thing, which right now is just focusing on getting this farming thing out. And for me, yeah. it's focusing on you know on raising the number of dials made from from our office here. And I, I, I lost like making the change too. I lost my vision on the one thing, like too. Like my one thing is still to to lead generate, and I need to to obviously bring in transactions as well. Yeah. So. Um, making a move and concentrating on this, I found myself kind of being taken away from that. Yeah. Um, so I really like I had to get my standing desk back up in the basement and everything. Right. So I, I just rezoned myself into what it used to be. And it, and even already just having that there and, and being in a different position and, you know, having everything set up like I did, I'm already back in the zone and, and, and just dialing every day. Right. Cause I have to make that happen. And then working on this on my schedule times throughout the day. Yeah, it's so funny that you say that, man, because that that really hits home with me. Like I did that last year, man. I kind of I kind of got off track a little bit because like, you know, they call it the shiny object syndrome. Right. It's like I mean, I was fascinated with EXP and what it did and the rev share. And, you know, I, I wanted to start podcasting and I wanted to start adding value into to agents lives. But at the same time, I still had to make sure that we had a business that was profitable. Right. I have people. I have people who are still depending on me um, to help kind of guide the ship, and so I had to be very careful that you know that I didn't prioritize those things that weren't making me the most amount of money. In other words, maybe my longer term projects yeah. um, that I couldn't prioritize over the ones that were actually moving the needle. And uh, I did, man. I got off track a little bit last year, and I'm not sure that. Um, I regret anything that I did, but I had to, I, ca I caught myself too, like you did. And I was like, man, Hey, you know, get back on track. Like, this is what you, you still got to do this until you can leverage that piece out and, 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 and have somebody take that over and, 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 and take that role where it needs to go. And, and, and so I refocused this year too, man. And that's why that when I read the one thing, it was like, it kind of hit me, man. I was like, I, you got to refocus. Like, this is what you need to do. And really what my goal is, Jerry, and I think this is probably where you're going to, and and, and this is where most team leaders are, is that you've got to, if you're going to, if you're going to run a team, um, you, you're not, you are a leader, but you're also, you're a servant of the people that have committed to spend their time with you. And, you know, the reality of it is most of us, like the people that come to work, like we're spending more time with them than we are our significant others sometimes. And so like, that's a huge responsibility. The people that are willing to commit that much time to me, you better believe I'm going to be all in on them and committing my time to them. And so like I do a lot of thinking, man, I'm on the treadmill and I'm always like taking notes and I'm reading books. And I some of my best ideas come in the morning when I'm on the treadmill. I'm constantly emailing myself, you know what I mean? And, and just and writing stuff down. But it's like that I, I felt when I got back into that role to where I was, I was more present with my agents. Um, it just, I felt like I was, I don't know, it felt like more in alignment with my vision and where I wanted to take this thing. And then, you know, like the rev share stuff, I knew that ultimately it would just show up as a byproduct of adding value for, through conversations like this with you. And that will come, I, I, it's funny because I had this conversation literally today with, uh, with another uh, coach and and it went along the same lines is and i already know i already saw myself kind of off the path even with other things like rev share and events and stuff like that um but you can't bite the hand that feeds you right you got the people you you got to be a leader to those people if you take if you're absent from the business the it's going to get upset it's a lack of culture and everything's going to fall apart so yeah. um my that's where this farming everything kind of stems from it is really to grow the business to to the next level and rev share and everything will come passively through that aspect as well. That's right. And, and th that's so, I mean, because what what will happen is like as your business grows, yep. you're going to create more credibility and influence. Mm -hmm. and, and naturally, people are going to want to have those conversations. You're going to attract people into your circle that want to be or do what you're doing, right? And those conversations will happen organically at that point.
right? Exactly. Yeah. It, but we, I mean, people like you and I also, we have a tendency to get ahead of ourselves. It's like, wow, you know, this, this is such a great idea. I just want to go all in on it. It's like, whoa, 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 reel it back in. And, you know, people like Jay and Mike, like I, I thought about this a lot because like, you know, Jay's grown his, his rev share group so quickly, but he's been making deposits in those relationship banks for a, over a decade. Right. And so the conversation with him was very natural and where somebody like, uh, myself or like you, you know, we're we're we've not built out those relationship banks, but that's if if we continue to do what we're good at, we will. Yeah. And so we just have to be a little bit more patient. Yeah, it's going to happen exactly. Right? And that's like I have like we have a relationship with a lot of agents in the area here, and it's it's just it's such a new thing here as well, right? And that's where we know like even Brandon is uh, he's he was my sponsor, and we we had that conversation at the end of the week last week, and it was like let's just let's grow our businesses, let's build that authority, be that authority, and it's it's all going to come naturally down the road. Yeah, and he's talking about Brandon Town guys who's been on the show before. Um, Brandon's a really good dude, man. I like him a bunch. Love hanging out with him when we go and connect on uh, on all the EXP events. Um, so tell me this, man, because I remember having a conversation with you um, a few months back, and, and I called, and 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 and, and uh, so and Brandon wanted you and I to talk because we had that KW connection. Um, and you know, you this is not something that happened overnight for sure for you because, like like myself, I mean, I loved KW. I I, I love the company. I love what it stood for, and um, I still I wouldn't say anything bad about it. I just felt like I had found a better opportunity. So for you, like, how did you process that move? How did you move through that? It, uh, yeah, it was, it was a, it was a lengthy process, man. Um, it was about six or seven months, right? I, I think we talked in August, uh, August or September along those lines. And it's just, just education, really educating myself on it, speaking to other people who have, who have made the switch. And, uh, and then ultimately it comes down to what can I do really to influence the people, like you said, that are in the business and to improve their lives as well. Yeah. Uh, looking at the model and it really provides a better future for, for everyone within the organization um, just for the future and make everyone kind of better financially, better professionally and better personally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, it's so important that you just said that because like when you say you're, I mean, you're a true leader in the sense of the word because you, you kind of put your people before yourself and 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 I know that because of what you just said in that you know it's it's really providing a better financial opportunity um, and growth opportunity for the folks who've committed themselves to me and I felt the exact same way because when when I was when I was making the decision to move over we were actually in the midst of opening our own Keller Williams Market Center we had the building picked out we had the group picked out and this idea came to me um, and when it was presented to me, it was like, it kind of hit me. It was like, whoa, you know, that sounds, it sounds really cool, but you know, we're here, we are over here we're we got this market center thing going on. And, you know, it just kept coming back in front of me, back in front of me, back in front of me. And finally, you know, I had to take a look at it and it was like, um, this, this is looks amazing, man. And not only that, but for me to move to Keller Williams and be an owner there was great for me. But it wasn't necessarily good for anybody on my team. I was gonna, I, I was gonna benefit from it, but no one on the team was gonna benefit from it. And that's really what helped me make the decision at the end of the day, Jerry, is that if I made the decision to come to Keller Williams, it was good for me. But if I made the decisions to go to EXP, it was good for everyone. Yeah. And that's ultimately why I made the decision to move to EXP. Yeah, absolutely. And there's so many avenues that it can be good for everyone, right? It, it just for training and everything for for onboarding agents and along those lines, it's very systematic already the way it is for team wise, that onboarding process and, and building passive lines of income is is really systematic already. It's already there. Yeah. Yeah. So what when you made the decision to finally leave, what was it for you? I mean, what, what I know it was a culmination of a lot of information yeah. gathering. What, what 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 how did it how did the needle actually get tipped over? Um looking at where the market was really going and uh and the opportunity that we we really had in front of us at the end of the day, um, 
was was the big thing. And it was it was a it wasn't my decision. It was a team decision. I always Brandon and and Michael can tell you every every dinner that I had with them, I always left it with like I'll bring it back to the team. We'll talk about it. Yeah. Uh, and at the end of the day, it was it was the opportunity and um, to grow in all areas and and really make a change, right? Or be the change at the end of the day because it is a great company. There's a lot of great things to it. I just think a lot of people just don't understand it to, to the level that uh, that we do at this point. Yeah, yeah. And on some levels, you have an opportunity. And I know this was appealing to me too, but you know, KW was kind of established here and it's yeah. kind of established across the United States and maybe in Canada for the most part. Um, and so that's kind of been built out. It's kind of been done, but there was some... There was some appeal to being able to 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 lay the foundation for EXP in Ohio and potentially the region. And I'm sure that's appealing to you to be able to lay the foundation for EXP up in Canada, because that's how you leave a legacy. Right. It's one thing to go work and build a team at a company, but you're not really leaving a legacy because it's already been done. You're actually you're bringing EXP to Canada. Right. You're laying the foundation. And so that's I mean, that's a legacy builder. Right. Absolutely, man. And I think well, there was free agents in the whole region when uh, when when I came over. So it is it is looking at it too it is is making it systematic too because even if like obviously building the business, but then taking that onboarding of, of agents into EXP and making that systematic as well. We've done a couple calls now with with some great leaders here in Canada that have joined recently, and we're just making it more systematic. So when people do come on, it's less confusing. We're gonna re retain more of those agents as well, more long term if they're more successful at a quicker pace as well. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, that's awesome, man. Well, it's, it's, it's been a pleasure talking with you, man. Um, let me ask you this. If, if somebody wants to connect with you either to learn more about your farming process, or maybe they, they live in Canada and just have um, questions about, you know, potentially moving their business over to EXP, how do they get in touch with you, Jerry? Yeah, man, absolutely. I got a website. It's called jerryv.com or they can just DM me either on Facebook or Instagram as well. Awesome, brother. Well, I, I so appreciate you being on, man. And I could literally have this conversation for hours. I, I love talking about lead generation. I love talking about just the business of real estate and always love sharing these stories week after week because I know they're literally changing agents' financial lives, my own included. Do me a big favor. If you know someone that might enjoy the podcast, please share it with them. And if you like the podcast, please go to wherever you listen to podcasts and hit the subscribe button. If you want to jump on a 30-minute call with me for free, uh, for a private business strategy session, go to meetmikewall.com. Don't forget, you can always view these episodes over at theagentfactory.com. And that's it for this one, folks. Jerry, thanks so much, man. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it, buddy. All right, brother. Have thanks. a great weekend.